All right, we're going to start. I'm Sue Greenwald with the Empowered Light Holistic Expo, and our next expo is April 26th through 20. Oh my golly, 28th, 2019, at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in uh, Oaks, PA, outside of Philadelphia. And I'm here tonight with Brad Johnson and John D'Souza, our featured speakers for this particular expo. I wanted to introduce them to you and also talk a little bit about what they'd be talking about. So, hey, Brad and John, how are you? Hi, Hello, Sue. Great. great to see you. Great to be here. <laughs> well, all right, since you're, you're there, John, why don't you tell a little bit about how you got started and um, a little bit about what you'll be doing at the expo. I have the titles and the topics of your talks, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Well, I'm John D'Souza. I'm also known as the X-Man uh, because early in my FBI career, I got involved uh, with the uh, show called The X-Files from like the 90s, for those who remember that. And um, I am, have been investigating mysteries and the paranormal ever since. And it's been something I've always, uh, I've always worked on, uh, whether by coincidence or by uh, plan of the universe and so I've always been working on those sorts of things and those are the uh, as a matter of fact those are the presentations I'm going to be given at the uh, expo that I'm really looking forward to and that'll be some uh, very interesting stuff. It's going to be a great a great expo I'm so excited to have you both. How about you Brad? Um, can you talk a little bit about what you'll be doing at the expo? Yes. Well, uh, again, for the past 10 years, I've been channeling in a, an entity known as Adronis, and uh, he basically represents a Syrian multidimensional consciousness. So he is from the star of Sirius A. Uh, and I started connecting with him back in 2008. So a little over the past 10 years, I've been doing a lot of interactions, mostly with people one on one from all over the world, uh, thousands of clients. Uh, readings and sessions, uh, also been doing a lot of different forms of uh, events from all over the country and again uh, worldwide as well too. So Adronis is going to come through and he's going to be talking a lot about the shifts that we're going through, a lot of the collective momentum about what's happening right now, how people are branching out of them to their own reality and uh, the momentum that's coming through as well. So we're basically going to get a lot of clarity in regards to the momentum of energies that's happening right now, the collective shift that's taking place right now, uh, what people can do to kind of ease the transition as well, too. Uh, and of course, we'll have interactive Q&A as well, too. So people can ask questions, any questions they want to Adronis, because he's kind of like a galactic encyclopedia. So he covers a lot of information. Very excited about that. And I'll be asking for Q&A beforehand so that we can uh, be very streamlined during the event itself. Mm -hmm. Both uh, Brad and John's events would be live streamed. So if you can't make the expo itself, you can um, live stream their video and even get a copy of it after the fact, which is really exciting. And there's also the second workshop I'm doing, cellular yes. body regeneration yes. as well too. So in a nutshell, that works to teach your, your your cells in your body to self-heal, to reprogram them and uh, heal into areas of healing organs, healing uh, areas of the body that may be stagnant. So we'll be talking about that as well too with uh, cellular body regeneration. So if somebody came to cellular uh, body regeneration, it's a two hour workshop. Will yes. they learn everything they need to do to, um, to use your technique? Not yeah, we're, we're actually going to be demonstrating the technique in the workshop. So you'll learn how to do it. It's a very simple guided meditation. Uh, we basically work with what's known as a theta brainwave state and uh, teaching you how to work with the cells, feel the cells for yourself, reprogram them and direct them into clearing out any particular forms of toxins within the body. Excellent. So I think pretty much everyone on planet Earth could use that workshop. Oh, yes, I would say so. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'll be channeling the Dronus on Saturday afternoon. Yes. Uh, for those that are not familiar with your videos, can you tell us a little bit about who a Dronus is? Well, again, he represents a Syrian consciousness. So he exists in a probable reality, as he terms it. So if people are familiar with uh, Abraham Hicks, who uh, Esther Hicks channels, or Bashar channeled by Daryl Anka, or Seth channeled by Jane Roberts, then it's kind of in that very much flow as well too. So like I said, I started channeling him back in December of 2008. I was doing what's known as channel writing or automatic writing at that particular time and he came through and he introduced himself and said, Brad, I'm a future version of you 297 years in the future. I've come back at this time to share this uh, knowledge with you and uh, to help you to spiritually evolve. And as you spiritually evolve, you'll be taking others with you to help spiritually evolve as well too. Is this an agreement that you want to bring forward? So I did, I certainly agreed. And uh, since that time I've had 
really amazing encounters with him as well, too. Uh, there was even times where I thought I was going completely crazy. <laughs> I was doing a lot of this channeling, and I said, you know what, guys, I have to know that this is real. Is this, is this a real thing? So I went out to my balcony, and I just started kind of saying a blessing out, out to the stars and saying, you know, if there's any ships in the vicinity, any allied ships that want to share with me, please just show yourselves. I want to make sure I'm not going crazy. Five seconds later, the star wheels roll out of the sky and just shoots right across the sky. Lasted like about over a 30 second sighting. My ex-wife also saw it as well too. And I said, okay, well that, that's it. That's all I needed. <laughs> so I'm not going crazy. So that was uh, my feeling certainly at the time, but there's been so much information uh, that he has provided. Uh, like I said, he's like an encyclopedia and he shares a lot of great powerful information. It's really transformed my life and he helps people to really uh, look into their life path and life stream and helping them to evolve themselves into, into the people that they want to become. So moving past the idea of inauthenticity to come into authenticity. Well, I've been a, a kind of a, a Dronus junkie ever since I discovered you, Brad. <laughs> and I love the messages. I love that they, um, number one, the questions are answered. There's no dancing around the question, you get the answer. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's clearly spoken, it's, it's understandable, it's practical sometimes done with a little humor, but it's to the point, and I really appreciate that. And I also love the wide range of topics that you've talked about, and I've learned a lot from them as well. They filled in the cracks on many of the questions that I've had. So I think that those that come to the expo will be really excited about that. Yes, yes, absolutely. Like I said, any questions are fine. Uh, some people like to ask about, you know, the person. I've had, I've had people just, again, for all walks of life asking all kinds of different questions. Will my dog survive surgery? Or uh, what's this new job I'm getting? Or whatever it is, right? So there's all kinds of different varieties of questions and people say, oh, what's, what's the purpose of the universe, right? So it can go from how is your dog doing to what's the purpose of the universe? So that's <laughs> everything in between between that, right? So, so our, our topic is, is going to be Saturday the 27th at... 2 p.m. with Brad, and you'll be channeling Nadronus, and it's shifting uh, into the new earth, what's necessary to move into the higher frequency. So it's really like what's next for us and how to, how to make sure we're on the, on the uh, wave that's, that's going forward. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, it's basically the rainbow bridge that we're crossing a rainbow bridge right now between third and fourth density earth. And that just represents the idea that there's a new dimension unfolding, that there's new opportunity, that there's a greater depth perception of reality that's unfolding. Right now. Excellent. And um, there'll be an opportunity for Q&A. Mm -hmm. And then on Sunday at 12 o'clock noon, all right, so Sunday's the 28th, you're going to be doing the cellular body regeneration. If you are yes, exactly. using theta wave, um, basically a brain wave state. Yep. Mm -hmm. so you'll be talking about it people will get to experience it during the expo and yes. then they'll have that as a takeaway yeah that's right right so those that can't be at this expo can live stream those experience it live and then they'll get a link to the video they'll also get a link uh before the expo so that they can send us their q a Great. That oh, sounds good. Exciting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Back to you, John. How are you? <laughs> I am great. Uh, great. So, so t uh, on Sunday, you're doing a, a workshop called Clear Hearers. Can yes. you talk a little bit about what a clear hearer is? Sure. sure. And I'm just, I'm just tickled to be here with Brad uh, and to see his material as well, because it juxtaposes so well to the stuff that I'm talking about. Clear hearers are people who receive a, a great voice, a great clear voice of authority during times of crisis, times of difficulty, and things, um, events that are, are completely uh, unexpected and uh, that are able to receive these messages and that uh, do not, very often do not know where these messages, what the source of these messages are. And my book, The Clear Hearers, is like an investigative file uh, that really puts together the clues and draws up like a, an FBI profile, if you will, of this personality, of this character. You know, Brad already knows who he is channeling. and He's able to share that with us. But in the case of clear hearers, these are people who are already receiving these types of messages. And we need to really get together with each other uh, because I also put in my family history, which is a very deep his, multi-generational history with clear hearing, as well as review the um, historical figures throughout, uh, throughout history that have been 
clear hearers and who have spoken about it themselves so that we can compare our own experience to theirs and see what really is the deal and what is the source of clear hearing. It sounds really interesting. So, so the average person could come to the Clear Hearer workshop and get something out of it, it sounds like. They'd get some information and then they'd maybe get some support, some connection with others and um, find out maybe how to develop their skills a little bit more. Absolutely. These, these um, occurrences are so common. Everyone has had these experiences, basically. In my experience, even people who are completely materialist, uh, non-believers in anything, that is a matter of fact, have had these experiences. And I will, and basically my workshop is also a presentation where I will prove to people, I will prove to them that not only they have had these experiences, but how these experiences commune between their fellow experiencers and how it all comes together to point to a single uh, perpetrator, let's say, uh, who is behind all of this clear hearing experiences. So that's going to be uh, Sunday at 2.30. It will also be live streamed for those that can't make it. It sounds very exciting and very interesting. Yeah. Tell us about your other presentation you'll be doing, uh, The X-Man, A Paranormal Life. Tell us about how that got started and what you'll be talking about that, that afternoon. Oh, that got started with uh, television producers that I'm always in contact with who are always um, asking me for uh, the biography basically of my life and being able to talk about all these cases uh, that have dealt with the paranormal and investigations that have gone on. And uh, some of these investigations are, you can actually see online uh, if you just go to vault.fbi.gov uh, where these, these files have been declassified and put on the net because they're, well, they're of a certain age and then they just get declassified and put on the net. Uh, but most of these cases have never been talked about before. And my main presentation is just me finally bringing forward the cases as much as I can talk about. And that's kind of a, that's kind of a legal procedure where I finally figure out how much I can talk about on these cases and on and what I, can't what I have to leave out, uh, but I have finally come up with the complete list of all the cases and experiences that I've had as the X-Man uh, that I can actually share with people. And I've completed the list and there's some shocking stuff in there, shocking, um, shocking material. And uh, it's going to be pretty surprising for people who are able to see that presentation on the, when it comes up. It's going to be very exciting. Yeah. And again, we'll be live streaming it for those that can't make it, and they'll get a video link. But it, it's better if you can be in there in person, of course. Yes. And, and I don't not, want it to be at the same time as Brad's because I want to see Brad's. No, stuff. it is not. They're they're Good. one after like, another. I got to see John's as well. Got to <laughs> <laughs> make sure we space it apart, good, so I can see. It. <laughs> <laughs> they're spaced apart, and now you'll both have um, vendor booths. At, at the expo, meaning you'll be there all weekend mingling with people. So John, what will you be doing at your uh, vendor booth location? At my vendor booth location, I will be selling, <laughs> of course, I will be selling uh, copies of my book, of course, uh, The Clear Hearers, which is right here over my right shoulder. And I will be uh, also my uh, first book, The Para Investigators, the uh, cases of supernaturally gifted investigators and of course my um uh, my um uh, most well-known book uh the extra dimensionals uh where i explain to people uh what i know about alien visitors who they really are why they're really here and what messages they have imparted to us directly that is uh not well known by people but it's out there if people are able to look for it that's what i'll be doing at my vendor for I feel like we need more presentation times. It sounds like we could talk about this for hours. It's so interesting. But it sounds also like people will come up to your booth, strike up a conversation. Of course, they'd want an autographed book, but then you'll be able to answer their questions and mingle with them face to face, which I think there's a, a great value in. So that sounds very exciting. Absolutely. The best part always about these, uh, these uh, get togethers is always being able to have direct contact with people. And then people always telling you, you know, a lot of them are already 
have already uh, you know shared your material in the past and then them telling uh, you the the results that they've had the the help that they've had how it has taken away their feeling of aloneness of being uh, of these experiences being unique to them i mean i was just uh listening to an experience uh that brad had before we went on the air and it's it juxtaposed perfectly with something that happened to me i was just i was in my backyard in a grove of uh, fruit trees and i was uh, just looking up at the sky doing my meditations and prayers and i was doing something and then all of a sudden uh a, an airliner a commercial airliner comes directly over my home which never happens here in arizona it never comes through this route but apparently there were some storms or something and a airliner came right over the spot where i was standing and it lit up three different multicolored orbs that had been standing right over my head I mean, the one was orange, yellow, and the other one was green. And apparently they had been standing right over, but invisible, of course, mm -hmm. until the airliner lit them up like a spotlight. And then as soon as I saw them, they went like this in all different directions, like, oh my gosh, we're caught. And they just scattered. Yeah. It nice. was crazy. But anyway, it's just amazing because now I just heard an experience from Brad that was... Yeah, yeah, that's very similar to some other experiences I've had from other people as well, too. Like I was talking about before we went on the air was that uh, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy doing all this channeling work. And so I went out to my balcony and I just put out a prayer. I said, if there's any allied ships in the vicinity that want to share with me and just let me know that you guys are actually here, I'm not going crazy. This isn't all being made up in my head. Please show yourself. And then five seconds later, a star goes out of the sky shoots right across the sky 30 seconds long ex-wife was a witness as well too so yeah we i've had some pretty inc incredible encounters i've actually had uh, projection projections of adronas that have come in as well too when i've just been half asleep I'm like it's at 3 a.m all of a sudden i'm seeing this silver silhouette of adronas and he's showing these these light circuits these symbols in that way and as soon as i get these light circuits these symbols then i start getting like major abundance flowing through me afterwards so i've had two encounters with him like that as well too so yeah, we have some really extraordinary experiences I think we're gonna share too, a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and I like the way that Brad described that we're in an age of like some sort of rainbow transition. I'm not yes. sure how you yeah, said it. The rainbow it. bridge, yeah. Yeah, and it's and it, what's why it's so important for us to help these people who are realizing that this physical materiality is, it's a facade. And mm -hmm. what's real is just beyond this. Yep. And we need as many portals as possible to show people, to show people what really is true, what is really real and what really matters. That's why it's so important to have these diverse points of view, uh, like myself and Brad, that come forward and yet all lead kind of to the same thing, sort of. The funny thing as well, too, is I've noticed is that people always have their different ways of life. People will be CEOs, they'll be in corporations and stuff like that. But when they get the chance, they'll, they'll raise their hand and say, you know what, I've had those experiences as well, too, right? So it's like a Fortune 500 guy, and he's had all kinds of success and all that. But as soon as they get the opportunity, they'll admit, oh, yeah, I've seen, I've seen ships. I've, I've talked to beings and stuff like that. Like, oh, my God, this guy's credibility. What's going on? <laughs> so everybody from every walk of life, and especially with the thousands of people I've talked to over the years, they've all have some very empowering and powerful state, uh, statement to share relating to other encounters, whether it be paranormal, whether it be extraterrestrial, whether it be their own spiritual experiences, everybody's had one. And the ones that tell you they don't are lying to you. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, that is so true. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my particular problem is that a lot, of, a lot of my people tend to be in law enforcement. Uh, that, uh, and so it's a, little more, it's a little more problematic to trust them and mm -hmm. what they're doing. Because I'm just like, geez, you know, law enforcement people suck. Because <laughs> I look at myself and I'm just like, oh, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to trust them. And mm -hmm. uh, I, and I even have, I have that problem too sometimes with uh, people in, uh, in paranormal community, in the alternative community, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, who are just like, oh no, this person is FBI. You know, it's got to be, it's got to be bad. It's got to be bad. But, um, and I try to explain to them that, uh, you know, it's, it's not like CIA. FBI is a very different organization. I mean, it's corrupt. Uh, it's corrupt now, yeah, because of what's going on with what has happened in the political world with the FBI. So it's been very badly corrupted. But I was in the last generation of FBI agents before this current whatever is going on uh, right now. And we learned 
a different way of life. And before the James Comey situation. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <Yeah. That's> exactly. <laughs> And as a matter of fact, I've had people, I've had people who are like former FBI agents and uh, who've reached out to me, oh, we've got paranormal experiences. But as soon as I looked them up, if they had anything to do with, uh, with uh, Comey or, or that crew, I'm just like, okay, no, I, I, can't, uh, I can't partake with people like that. So yeah. it's hard to know sometimes uh, which people are, uh, are genuine, genuine mm -hmm. and which ones are not. So I have to uh, be careful with that. Yeah, exactly. Well, I've had a lot of people that have uh, come up to me. Actually, I've had a few scientists that have actually uh, wanted to have a session with Adronis to see exactly how you build spaceships. And so uh, Adronis as well, we wouldn't really tell it to you like you would build a circuit board, right? It's very, very different in regards to the type of uh, element that you would have to use for the ships. You'd have to use and the idea of what's known as singularity drives as well, too. Uh, so he talks about a lot of different types of ships that aren't really the quote unquote nuts and bolts that we may find behind the scenes. A lot of them are kind of like living craft as well too. And basically that he, he's talked about singularity vessels, he's talked about light ships, he's talked about um, biological vessels as well too, organic ships. And these, are, these, these vessels are all very much alive and have their own consciousness. So, and then the scientists are, oh, I think that's a little out of my league. Yes, yes. So, <laughs> and then of course doing what you can as a translator to try and translate a lot of these you know, technicalities with, with what people want to know about with building ships and stuff like that. But I think if you're gonna try and build a, a spaceship in your backyard, you might get a visit or knock on your door if uh, <laughs> something like that occurred. <laughs> that is true, that is true. Hey, um, Sue, it looks like it, it won't throw it back to me unless you talk first. Oh no, I, I've got you on my screen, but um, yeah, you oh, keep, okay. yeah, it's working. Um, yeah, I wrote about that, Brad, in my book, uh, The Extra Dimensionals. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because, oh, I see, I'm not lighting up, but I'm still on screen. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I believe, that, I actually believe that all, um, extraterrestrial ships that are genuinely extraterrestrial are living, uh, living creatures themselves. And there tends to be no one inside. They are their own form of life. Mm -hmm. They are their own, um, things. And they actually accompany alien visitors when they come into our reality as, uh, as familiars. Yep. They carry out small tasks for them. Mm -hmm. They do things, important things sometimes for them. Mostly they just collect information for them, data on us. And that's their primary function, but they do other things too. Uh, like uh, sometimes if you put on those um, military ops goggles, uh, you can see them in the sky uh, yeah, the night fighting, with, okay. fighting with, yeah, night vision. The skirmishes, uh, yeah. Yes, fighting with each other and having those little skirmishes and stuff because they're, they're kind of like, I consider them kind of like dogs because what I see up in the sky looks like a dog park to me. Yes. It's like dogs just running at each other and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, beeping each other and fighting, but there's no catastrophic fight. I mean, dogs, the dogs aren't going to really hurt each other. Mm -hmm. And that's what I see. And so I definitely believe that, that this is a separate form of life that we're seeing. Yes, when exactly. You look up there, that's and that, that's true as well too. I've, gotten, I've actually got a lot of channeled encounters about the um, the, the night go vision goggles and seeing the ships in the sky. Some of that is actually SSP, so some of it is actually our own guys shooting at other spacecraft that our visitors mm -hmm. aren't supposed to be here, etc. Yeah. So there's like patrols. There's there's like these uh, squadrons that kind of fly around the Earth. There's even been reports of uh, SSP guys doing some really weird things. They're actually coming in. They're actually like seeing you know somebody giving them a finger while they're flying by and then, you know, zipping out here as well too. So some of them are kind of like, you know, the hot shop Mavericks, right? Wow. So they, they have that as well too. But yes, I have certainly had um, encounters from what Adronis has shared as well too. He says, well, actually what we will say is that many of the skirmishes that you see above your planet are actually your own, your own governments or your own SSPs yeah. that are taking Definitely. place, they're chasing away other, other uh, visitors that aren't supposed wow. to be here. It sounds like with Adronis, you could actually do presentations on like, any separate areas of life that matter. Yeah, uh, I've done part of those, <laughs> part yeah. of those as well too. But it's great to have other confirmation as well for people who have, you know, gone into documented cases as well too. It's great to see commonality with a lot of this information yeah. that comes out. That's what it is because I go through so many documented cases, some of which have been ignored, uh, profoundly ignored mm -hmm. by ufology uh, community and others. Uh, yep. th this is stuff that's not convenient for them. Mm -hmm. there, it mm -hmm. doesn't. It doesn't help their agendas, <laughs> and uh, and yet so much of it 
juxtaposes with the stuff that you're coming up with. So it's well, it's great. Yeah, I like to hear. I like to read the uh, Clear Heroes book because it sounds very, very interesting. Uh, oh, I was actually just doing a um, a presentation about this not too long ago. Not so much about the Clear Heroes, but about Kundalini and how all Kundalini basically exists right in the sacrum of our of our spines. And at a certain point, we'll get these little jolts of Kundalini. It looks like rainbow fluid if you're actually able to dry it and it almost looks like like a like a dry rainbow resin that's contained in a dish there's actually a report of people like being able to take like a chisel and a hammer and are actually trying to chisel the kundalini or the dmt out and you get sparks of rainbow light flying everywhere right and if you actually look very very deeply when like they're doing autopsies as well too you can actually see rainbow fluid going through the spinal the spinal column Wow. At times, and that's all kundalini. So we'll get that at certain times to activate centers from our, from our clear hearing, from clairvoyance, from all of these things. It's all just bursts of kundalini that are coming through us. Wow. Well, with um, clear hearers, it's always uh, the primary criteria is that clear hearers never get voices through the ears. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come through the no, ears. No, it no. tends to come always from either it comes from one of the chakra centers, like uh, we have one famous clear hero who used to get the, got the voice from his chest. He said, oh, it came through my own chest. Well, yep. that's one of the chakra centers. Another one, uh, the solar plexus. Uh, others like myself, it would just be uh, a voice coming from behind you, just behind you and just coming through in waves that are so strong. It feels like you're standing next to one of the uh, speakers at a concert, at a rock concert. Mm -hmm. And just that deep face just kind of rumbling through you and shaking your bones. And that's, mm -hmm. so it's, those are the uh, earmarks of clear hearing as well. Exactly. I got the subtle ones in the pineal. So when I, when I communicate with Seth, so oh, he comes no. through like, okay, talk about this, talk about that, talk about this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's all right in the, it's in the center of the, of the pineal nexus where I get them. Nice, nice. There is also the there is also the still small voice, which is talked about in a lot of sacred religious texts, uh, like the uh, Buddhists, uh, Buddhist writings uh, in the Bible as well. And the still small voice is something that tends to sit at the uh, solar plexus, and it is not. It's really not a voice at all, even though it's called referred to as a voice. That's that is just the prompting. It's this little prompting that's planted in you by creator force, supposedly. Mm -hmm. And it's just that little, it's that little feeling, that prompting that you get, do this, don't do this, don't, don't do this. And if we lived in a society that was perfectly clear of electronic uh, interference and all this noise, we would be in constant contact with that still small voice all the time. Very None good. of us would ever do anything wrong. We yep. would always do the right thing. We would always make the right decision. And we would be living in a very different, different society if that if people were in contact with that. That sounds like the third brain or the, the second brain that they call it uh, in, in traditions, like Taoist traditions. You basically have the dantians, the, the intestines, the, the heart, and the top of the head. And those would represent like the three brains. Maybe to tap into them, they talk to you. Right? So they have these communications with you. So it sounds very familiar. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's really amazing stuff. Excellent. Well, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be great. <laughs> looking forward to April. Well, I think uh, one of the things I'm very excited about is you two have made a great connection and we all have, um, you know, common interests. And I think so many people at the expo itself will have the same interest. It's going to be very exciting. And I know, Brad, you have a new project that you're working on. I wanted to, uh, you to talk briefly about what you'll be doing at the Expo in your free time. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sorry, I, got, I got kind of carried away because we got such great information coming through here. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm doing what's known as Awoken TV. So this is a uh, video on subscription platform, video on demand. It's kind of like uh, Gaia for people who are familiar with Gaia. Um, it's kind of like Netflix and Udemy combined. And so I'm creating this very big network. Uh, and it's going to basically feature you know, conversations like this. So we're going to basically look into everything from spirituality, metaphysics, uh, consciousness from uh, conscious living to every everything, astrology, numerology, tarot. All of it's going to be on Awoken TV. So I'm putting it together right now. It's looking to be rolled out by March 31st. So the vending booth I will have there will be for Awoken TV. So if I have a laptop or two there where people will be able to sign up for a discount and uh, you can check out this amazing network. And John, I'll probably have to get an interview with you. The oh. on Awoken TV, I think it'd be great. Yeah. Great. Discounts for early adapters. That's <laughs> exactly <laughs> <what it's> <laughs> 
Yep. So you'll be able to mingle with people all weekend. They'll ask you questions. You'll explain Awoken TV and what the purpose is and just make sure that they have all their questions answered. Yeah, and, exactly. Um, and what, if I'm not there, I'm sure I'll have a volunteer that'll take care of things if people want to sign up. I hope so. Yeah. And one thing we need to um, clarify at the expo is that you're not going to be doing readings themselves at the expo. Many people have told me that they're waiting to meet you and have an, a reading with you at the expo. And I keep trying to let them know you're not doing readings there. So Yeah, well, what they can do is they can contact me through my email, uh, info at newearthteachings.org. And if you guys do want to do private sessions with me, we can do it before the expo. So I could probably just do it at my hotel room, for example. So just drop me an email, info at newearthteachings.org. If you guys do want to do private sessions with me, drop me a line that way, and right. we'll, we'll see if we can set something up. Right. And we even, uh, you, you know, I'll be over at the expo center setting up all week. So you could even use a room there if you prefer. Okay. You know, want to meet people in person. Yeah. Well, once I'm at the expo, it's all, it's all, you know, the, the presentation yeah. business and the work in TV, but right. before and after we can certainly do some private sessions. I'm really excited about uh, hearing both of your presentations. It seems like you have so much in common and there's so much, uh, it's going to be very exciting for everyone to come. So thank you. Okay. So, so I got to ask you, what are you going to do at the expo? Oh, I'll be running around uh, half crazed, but I will be watching both presentations. <laughs> I'll make sure I'm there. So generally, I, um, I start to walk down the uh, aisle, and I'm interrupted with a question or a problem, and it will take me probably all weekend to make it down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> so many times, I don't even get a chance to greet all the vendors or the people that come. I try to be there to kind of be the hostess and greet people, but it, it usually doesn't happen. Mm. <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> yeah. Might yeah. be different this year. So, yes, and I'm trying to get more helpers. And um, so, for those that don't know, I started the expo because I was strongly guided to do so. It wasn't because I felt it was a great business idea or I felt like I needed more projects because I'm pretty busy to start with and I was pretty happy with what I was doing. I ran a wellness center, I teach yoga, I do nutritional counseling, and and, um, you know, I do all sorts of spiritual classes and events, and I loved what I was doing. But I guess uh, Spirit felt that this was a way for me to get the word out about, you know, my interests and my lifestyle in a way that would hit more people. So I was strongly guided to start the expo. I disregarded, and um, it wouldn't go away. So roughly six months later, I decided to pick up the phone and, and, and take the action steps needed to start the expo. I started it from scratch with the contacts that I had in uh, the Philadelphia area, and um, the, I felt that the expo has been extremely successful. And uh, after about two expos, I decided I was so busy, I had to uh, close the doors of my wellness center. Mm -hmm. So I still teach three yoga classes a week, and I do some consulting, but you know, I'm not really not pursuing that because the expos themselves keep me so darn busy. <laughs> um, I do also do spiritual retreats and um, travel to cool places that I'm called to. It's not because I feel like I need a trip. It's because I'm guided to go there for a reason. Either there's a healing that needs to be done. There's some information we need. There's a reason for it. So I go where I'm called to go and the people that show up are the perfect people for that experience. So it's been really fun. It's been really fun. So, um, for this particular expo, I feel like we've got the perfect combination of speakers. You guys are going to be great. And I think people are going to be so excited to see you. And um, I like what you said, because I've been thinking a lot about how our bodies are so important. And of course, in our society now, we're eating the chemical food. We have the chemical water and in, in, in air, and we don't really take full care of ourselves. So in addition to being distracted by our electronic electronics and all the other stuff we have going on, we're not tuning into the message messages that we're receiving all the time from spirit. So one of the things I like to think is that when we're clean and clear with what we consume, it just makes it a little easier for us to recognize those signals and tune into them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's really hard because we start to do something and we're distracted. You know, it's, it moves at a fast pace and the pace is picking up. <laughs> it's only going to get faster, I think. So it's it's been very interesting the past couple of years, and I think the, this year is going to be super interesting. So, I agree. Yeah. It's going to be nice. Yeah. 
All right. Well, you, any other topics we should talk about? Oh, geez. I'm pretty sure we could spend many hours. Talking yeah, me too. About <laughs> maybe maybe we'll, do, we'll do a few more videos with the, like, we'll go off, off we'll, we'll go um, four-wheeling on, on those uncharted territories. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, That's really yeah. That's cool. Because, yeah, I have, I have a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things going on now yeah. that uh, people really need to pay attention to uh, besides, uh, besides what's happening in the political world, of yeah. course. Uh, but um, one of the things that's, that people really need to look up for themselves because there's no, there's no uh, news or investigative journalism anymore, of course, uh, of any real sort. Uh, so you're not getting any information at all really of anything important. Uh, but uh, since December since December 26th of last year, there have been giant portals opening over major cities across the United States and the world, in different parts of the world. And uh, it's it's been happening right there in front of, in the middle of the night, in the middle of the night in these cities, these giant, sort of like bluish bluish greenish portals have been opening up in the sky and many many ufos coming through those portals into our reality and people have their phones people have been video videoing this mm -hmm. all over the world and it's been happening about every five days in different cities and it's been occurring and then uh the the forces of the cabal have been blowing up transformers and gas stations to try to account for these portals opening up because they are desperate for us not to have communication with these beings coming through these portals, whether the UFOs are independent life or not, uh, but stuff is coming through. And this has been happening regularly. It happened up to two weeks ago. It happened in uh, Tennessee, in a, a city in Tennessee. It's, it's incredible, but it's also happened in Brazil. It's happened in uh, China. It's happened in other uh, countries as well. And it's happening on a regular basis and it's being filmed. It's being, people are getting it on their phones. Mm -hmm. This is the most amazing thing. And yet no one, people don't know about yeah. this. Yeah. Unless we, we had, a, had a big event uh, right around Christmas time. And wasn't it done in, um, I'm going to say New Orleans, but I, I don't think... Yes, one of these happened in New or uh, right outside New Orleans. It was a very big thing. And there were a couple like little Facebook mentions of it, but no reporting about it. Oh, no. Yeah. No, not a word, because they'll be shut down. They'll be shut down. They'll get a knock on their door from men in black, and it'll be, it'll be terrible. And, and so they were, instead, they're reporting this nonsense about, about oh, a transformer blew up. <laughs> like, as if a transformer is somehow blowing up or a gas station or whatever would light up the entire sky yeah. for for 20 minutes. Yeah. That's physically not, there's not even a physical connection there. Some, so, Yeah, some of my friends were actually in New York City and I saw it from two of their phones at the same time, you know, different perspective. And then of course yeah. I saw it through uh, other sources, the same exact event, huge, the whole sky lit up. So exactly. very and pe People were terrified. People were in these cities where this happens and it happens at night for some reason. Why? I don't know. It happens at night, but they go from pitch black at 12 midnight to all of a sudden it's like daytime. The, the, the entire sky is lit up with this portal, this swirling portal. It's in the middle of the sky. And, and, and I'm, just from my own experience, I can tell people most genuine UFOs, the majority of most real UFOs are invisible. They're just not visible to our spectrum of light. Because our, now, our bandwidth of, of vision is so tiny, so tiny. We can't see most UFOs. When you see a UFO and it's extraterrestrial in nature and it's actually visible to you, it's because something's gone wrong or there's somehow there's backlighting from the sun. And I actually, I actually demonstrate this in my presentation. It's usually because something weird has happened or some light has gone off inside the vehicle itself. Uh, those, are, those are the only UFOs we actually see with our bare eyes on, on video. But the majority of UFOs are, are not visible to us. They're just not. So I really am very certain that all those portals probably had hundreds, if not thousands, of UFOs coming through them. And only a few were actually caught on video on people's cameras. 
where they actually were able to get one or two video, one or two UFOs coming through the portals. And they're right there on video. And I'll, I can show them to people, and I do in my presentations, because nobody else is going to tell you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it also goes back to the NASA, NASA tether incident back in the 90s as well, too. Right? This huge, gigantic electromagnetic tether, and you mm-hmm. see thousands of ships all around yes. it. It's like looking at a petri dish. Exactly. And seeing all these different ships there. And that's actually one of the things that blew me away when I was just starting to, start, starting to get into this, was just, oh my God, yeah. I'm looking at all this. And this is and like that's, NASA footage as well, too. Yeah. And, that's one of the presenta- That's one of the things I show in my presentations because that entire incident, for instance, in 1996, the tether incident, all of those ships that were suddenly visible, the only reason those ships were visible was because the angle happened to be weird and the sun was directly behind the light. Where all the it lit up all of those ships which I don't believe were supposed to be visible to us. Yes, that's right. Other. And that's another thing as well, too. All portals will open at nighttime, even in national parks as well, too. This is why they- Why is that? National parks. National parks will try and close down the parks after yeah. dust, simply because that's the time where void uh, exists. And when you're actually going into the nighttime, the portals are actually much more susceptible because they become exposed by light rays. The light rays actually disrupt the portal networks. Oh. And so when you're actually in pitch black, there's no light rays to disrupt the portal network. So oh. light in that way actually is what creates like a disorder. It's like taking a, a prism and putting it against you know, a light beam oh, and putting it to reflect elsewhere. So when you have it at nighttime, there's no distortions. The, the portal becomes pure. Wow, okay. Yep. All right, this is good. This is good. That's there, like there's also some of those occurrences in Canada as well too. So we get to, I'm pretty sure it's a worldwide phenomena as well too. Even if you look at down in South Africa, like with Peru or Brazil, this is happening all the time. There's ships coming out all the time even in broad daylight as well too. Um, Mexico and South America have incredible amounts of, of UFO activity. And where are they all going, Brad? That's my question because question. we're talking thousands. We're talking, I mean, if you add them all up. I mean, well, here's, here's awesome. the interesting thing. Human, humanity is not the only experiment on this planet. There's basically about 17 or about 20 other experiments that are happening under the oceans they're happening in the inner earth. They're happening actually in the atmosphere as well, too. We're not the only experiment on this planet. There's about 17, approximately 17 other experiments that are happening here on earth so that these ships will go to those other forms of experiments that are taking place on this planet. So we're in shared space, you could say. Wow. It's wild. It's wild stuff. <laughs> um, there's, there's, like, there's, there's mermaids that exist underneath the oceans. There's, again, you could call them aquatic humans, aquatic humans that exist many miles underneath the water. I've actually talked to inner earth beings as well, too. They're known as Delphi. Uh, they exist just underneath the Delphi, Greece, and they've been there for millions and millions of years. Uh, Corey Good also talks about the Anshar, right? So there's, there's all different types of beings, all types of different experiments that are happening on this planet. It's like a big honeycomb. It's like looking at a, a hive, and we have all these different quadrants that uh, have all these different experiments going on. Wow. The earth is a way station. It is. It is. It's an intergalactic exchange center of information. Wow. So yeah, absolutely. We got to, uh, this this is exactly what happens too about, you know, the Bermuda Triangle, the Dragon Triangle, about all these ships passing in and they quote unquote vanish, but all that's happening is they're being transited into another dimensional earth. So it could be like say 30, 40 years later, they pop out again. And for them, it felt instantaneous to say, what happened? Hey, all of a sudden it's like 30 or 40 years and going by. So they actually shift to another dimensional earth and they're way, they're way portals. A lot of them in the ancient times would actually be used to go to different earths. They could be transgalactic as well too. You go to different star systems with them. It's uh, I think because a lot of the cataclysms that happened upon the planet, they uh, malfunctioned a lot after they were going down. Wow. So we need to learn how to transit these portals as well. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And they all come at night. So <laughs> that's amazing. Super exciting. So the ones that do come in at daytime would most likely be stargates. So if there's stargate portals that are coming in, and those are usually technological. So the Earth, it's kind of it's kind of like looking at thousands of Earths that are all intersecting our own plane as well. So this is why you have the cities in the sky. At times it happens as well too. Like what people saw over China, is that these cities in the sky will start popping up, and it'll be there for a certain window of time, and it'll close. It's because Earth is a honeycomb. It's a honeycomb clustered mm-hmm. Earth. And so you have these different windows of events that happen that actually intersect other worlds together with ours. In fact, you'll discover that certain people will come through these portal networks and they'll actually have no idea that they're on a different earth for maybe a few minutes before they go back into their reality as well too. You have people that they say are dimensional travelers that can basically teleportation. 
pop into this room for a few minutes and then bam, they're gone, or a few seconds and bam, they're gone. And our world is constantly being intersected by all these different dimensional Earths all the time. Wow, Earth is a planet of a thousand galaxies. You got it, yep. It's a, it's a world within thousands of worlds. Yeah, that's amazing stuff. <laughs> Because we could probably read, write about a thousand books on the topic and still not even cover everything that's happening. It's the earth is just, it's rich with, with all forms of life. So complex. It's, it's interesting and we'll never know it all. Will we? Oh, no. I mean, you have to, you have to really look at everybody. That's, you know, we're, we're all grains of sand, right. And we're all just offering everything that we have, even with uh, you know, the vast amount of information that uh, Adronis gives, it's still only so much, you know, you're looking at other people, you know, with what John's doing and with what other people are doing, how they're right. developing these new healing technologies and new healing techniques and uh, all this ancient wisdom that's now coming back and uh, extra dimensionals, extraterrestrials. It's vast. It's one big wild, crazy world, but it's a fun one too. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I appreciate both of you, um, you know, your time tonight. And um, I, I'm so excited to meet you both in person. And um, we'll, we'll be talking again about some of these other great topics. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot more to Thank talk you, about. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. <laughs>